I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. Today we're on the range with something I think we have not featured yet. So this is gonna be one of the first times we have it out. But this is my Scott and Sons, or my family's I should say, Scott and Sons percussion double barrel shotgun. Now Scott and Son or, or WC Scott and Co uh, were some pretty relevant or, or prevalent English gunsmiths uh, starting in about 1834 or so. And they went up to the turn of the century into the 1900s building double barrel and, and other kinds of shotguns. A quick overview of this muzzleloader that we have here. It is an original English double barrel shotgun and it carries over much of the same attributes that you'll see uh, from a lot of other English shotguns of its time. It's not, uh, because I'm using it really here, uh, a super nice or you know a super high-end muzzleloading shotgun like we see come out of England for this time period, but it is still really nice, I think. We have a beautiful walnut stock here. We have a simple iron butt plate here in the back and all over on the hardware for this piece, we have some really nice engraving. And I think, uh, you know, even though this was kind of a mass produced muzzleloading shotgun for its era, it still has some beauty in it. The checkering is well done. There's some nicks and dings throughout the stock here, but you know, just as always, that adds to a lot of the character of the muzzleloader. Coming up through the wrist here, we have a rather long tang connecting back to our wrist checkering. Then up here to our first tang bolt, we have some really nice scroll pattern engraving, really common for what you see in the mid 19th century about when we believe this to have been made. Um, that engraving really comes up through our tang and our bolsters here at the breech. And we have that same engraving on the locks here, um, back at the tail of the lock, up through the hammer and onto the hammer, as well as forward. Just under the breech here, we do have the Scott and Son engraved mark here, uh, just forward or just above one of our lock bolts here. And then we have some scroll pattern engraving in front of that. And then on the top here, just forward about where you'd find a rear sight on a rifle, we have London laminated steel in here. Again, kind of the English pride in their muzzle loaders and many of the firearms they still make today. Our ramrod has some brass ends on either end here, and it looks to be made out of some kind of dark wood, possibly ebony in here. Um, we picked this up a few years ago at a match um, and Really haven't had a chance to get it out very much, but turkey season is a great opportunity to bring this out and, and put some powder and some lead through it. I wanna say real quick that I am by no means an expert when it comes to muzzleloading shotguns. What I'm aiming to show you here is kind of my troubleshooting process on bringing a new to me muzzleloader into activity here on the range. This isn't gonna be a step-by-step -step guide from an expert telling you what to do. This is gonna be you watching a novice work through some of the problems that many of us have encountered when working with a new muzzleloader. For a target today, I've got the Mossy Oak Turkey Target that you can print off from their website. This gives us a rough approximation here for the turkey. Uh, we've got it posted there on two large sheets of newsprint so we can see our pattern better. And then I'm pacing back about 15 to 20 yards here to try to emulate ideally how close we can bring a gobbler in. This is a 14 gauge and I didn't have any wads or cards or anything for a 14 gauge. So I called a Mike Eater at Flintlocks LLC uh, to help me out. He's mainly known for a lot of shotgun shooters as Mike's quality shotgun wads. Uh, and he, I asked him his recommendation for this to get it out and get it prepped for turkey season. And he hooked me up with the Hunter's package in 14 gauge. This includes a hundred of each of an over powder card, a cushion wad, and an over shot card to get you set up and ready to go. And uh, really a lot of times you'll find folks are cutting their cushion wads in half. So you get a little bit of extra mileage out of a pack like this. But really this is gonna be plenty for getting sighted in and then future hunting seasons with this muzzleloader. So thank you, Mike, for hooking me up. Preparing to load on an antique arm like this is just kind of a recommendation for you. If you've just gotten something new, you wanna make sure that it's not loaded before we take it out. And even though I know that this isn't loaded and it's been in the vault here, I still wanna go through and check it. And the easiest way to do that is to drop your ramrod down the bore. We don't have a super long ramrod on this piece, so it makes it a little bit difficult. But what we can do here is take our ramrod and you can see here in a close-up that our rod just comes right to the end of this bore. So what I'm gonna do is mark with my thumb 
where that, where that rod touches the muzzle. And I'm gonna lay that on top of our bore. And we can see here that we go back to the breech end of our rifle, which is exactly what we want, or our, our shotgun here, or our bore. Um, so we know that that's clear. I'm going to start with my first load here. We're just going to go through the basic hunter's pack here with 55 grains of powder and 55 grains by volume of the number four shot here that we have in our little shot snake pouch. Generally, from what I understand, uh, running that square load is rather effective and it's a pretty simple way for us to get started here today. So that's what we're going to try. And again, I'm using that shoots in 2F powder in here. It's a common powder for us to see used in muzzle-loading shotguns like this. I've got this handy adjustable powder measure here. What I like about it for something like this is we have a kind of a funnel here at the top which allows us to uh, easily accommodate and, and pour shot and things and powder down the barrel. After our powder then we're going to put an over powder card down. These are a fairly thick card here Kind of center that in our bore, grab our ramrod out. We're going to use the bell end of this ramrod to load that card down. And then I'm going to run a dry cushion wad on top of that before we get to our shot. Then we'll measure out 55 grains by volume of our number four shot. I'm just using number four because that's what's in this shot snake and that's a, an appropriate amount for Hoosier Turkey here. Make sure we get all of that out. And then we're gonna go through and put a thinner card on top of that shot. And I'm not gonna walk you through every loading process here, uh, but for this first one, I think it's good to run our over shot card down now. Make sure our shot doesn't escape. I've got my capper here, so we'll cap when we get seated. There's no set trigger on this muzzleloader, and I'm sitting similarly to what I would um, while sitting and, and waiting for turkey here. I know this is a light powder charge for this muzzleloader, um, but for kind of a first shot of the day, I think it's a good one to try out. Here's our target. Not, uh, not a great spread for our turkey. I think I was a little bit high. We have a lot of the pattern kind of up here and a little bit over to the right. We have a couple shots here into the neck of the turkey and, and some down in here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in the bowl, at least inside the turkey with, with some more in there. But I think we can improve on this with the next shot. So we bumped up to 80 grains, which seems to be an all around 14 gauge black powder charge load. That's what we're gonna try here. Different targets so that we can see the pattern spread. So here's with the 80 grains of kind of the recommended charge. And we have a much wider spread here. So you can see we've got just a few even in the bullseye area compared to what we have outside here. So I'm thinking that the 80 grains in the dry setup is a little too much. Got too much spread going on. This one, we've adjusted our powder measure down to 65, kind of a halfway point between the two tests that we've already done here. And this is just kind of live experimenting. Um, not, um, not a professional here, and I'm sure that many of you at home know a lot more than I do, and I'm always open to your recommendations. What we'll try after this one is a lubed cushion wad to see if that gives us much of a difference. Kind of an old saying that goes, little powder, lot of lead. Shoots farther, kills him dead, I think is how it goes. And I think we might be running into that a little bit here. I will say my idea on this spout does not work great for this size shot. Okay, with that 65 grains, we have a much better shot count inside our bullseye here. So I think we're getting around to where we need to be. I'm thinking since we've tried 55 and 65 here now, maybe we drop it down to 60, see how that's working. 
and kind of go from there, compare the targets and then see where we need to go. And this is not at all testing all the variables here. We could come in and test half a cushion wad and, and maybe we'll do that here. If our 65 starts to look better, maybe we should come in and test a half a cushion wad and, and half a, a lubed cushion wad too. Um, there's a lot of variables when it comes into this kind of stuff, just like there always are for muzzle loaders. Um, but because we have the added addition of the cards and the wads and things, it gives you some more variables that you can play with. Just based on a first impression here, I think this is the most shot density that we've had here on the paper. Let's go back to look at the targets and see. Tallying up the shots in the bird, in the bull, and on the paper, the eight and a half by 11, this is what we have on a grain basis based on what we've already tested. I think we have a pretty good sweet spot here in the 60, 65 range. Um, I think really the 80 was a little too much. And we even see that on the newsprint here where our pattern spread was just all over the place. I will say that on our 65 grain, you'll notice we have a large condensing of the shot here a little bit to the right. And I think that's me um, not thinking about the right and left sides of the barrel here. I think really that this 65, when we account for the shot that's here in kind of this region, that'd be a really good spot if that was over a little bit. I think aiming our bead a little bit over here to the right helps with, or to the left, I should say, helps with that quite a bit. The 55, the 60, and the 65 isn't really changing a whole lot in regards of in the bird. And really the 15 or the 55 grains has the most shot in the bird. But what I'm going off of on, on leaning towards the 60, 65 grains is the amount of shot we have condensed in the bowl and then on the paper, because that improves dramatically when we go up to that 60, 65 grains, which I think gives us better odds to take the turkey in that first shot as an ethical shot. What, what do you think though? I'm gonna do some more testing here. We're gonna cut these cushion wads in half. It's gonna stick at that 60, 65 grain range here. See what that does, but let me know in the comments or shoot me an email, let me know what you think. For this shot, I'm sticking with our 60 grains here that we are trying. Um, I don't know that we're gonna have a whole lot of difference between the 60 and the 65 at this distance in particular. Put my overshot card in there. But what I'm gonna do now is a lot of times you see recommended for hunters hunting with a smooth bore or a shotgun, like we're shooting here, to use a lubed cushion wad. So I have soaked the same cushion wads that we've been testing in a vegetable oil. I will say it, it goes down the bore a lot easier after the shooting that we've been doing here. So we're gonna give that a shot. And a lot of times folks say that that's gonna give you a cleaner bore and it's gonna help um, keep your powder, I think, a lot of times from getting wet, except now my fingers are oily. I can't get my plug out, there we go. So we're gonna see if that changes anything on our pattern. And really, if you wanna go through and, and do this in a real scientific manner, you really wanna do like probably at least 10 patterns with each load to make sure you've got it dialed in. But we're just kind of getting close here and we'll do some more practice off camera. So we have a very interesting predicament here. We have a very large hole in our shot pattern right where we shot. So we have a ton of shot over here, not a whole lot over here, and we just have a couple going into our paper here. I think that lubed wad is changing things a little bit more than I anticipated. I'm wondering if we go up a powder charge on the same target, mark the shot that hit the paper previously, if we can see any difference. Very similar results. We've brought the donut a little bit more even, but we have, instead of three shots even on the paper, we have one, two, three, four 
on the paper. Um, really not the kind of wrench I was expecting by just switching to that lubed cushion wad. Doing it a little bit different this time. We're gonna do 60 grains of that same 2F powder that we've been using, the same lubed cushion wad, but this time we're gonna use a measure and a half of our shot here. It's gonna give us 50% more lead going down range. And it's gonna kind of keep us, and it's gonna keep us in the little powder lot of lead, shoot some farther, kill some dead phrase. Getting a few more on the paper there, but still not what I'm looking for out of a load for this. I've circled here the latest shots in the actual paper, and we're still getting kind of a donut effect to this. I think we can compensate by adjusting the bore to the right uh, in our point of aim here. I mean, we have a nice stack here of shot that I don't think is bad. I mean, if that was here in the head, I think that would be a dead bird. I mean, that's just right, around, right along your spinal column there. But there's just a few variables here that I'm not super pleased with. I'm gonna try this one more time with that measure and a half of shot here. See if we can get it a little more on the paper here. Looking at the target here, I'll show you a side-by-side -side of what the previous shot was so that we can see the difference uh, between each of these shots because right now we have a really condensed shot pattern there on our right-hand side, but we cannot determine what was existing here on the bottom and the left versus the previous shot, at least right now. So what we're gonna do is load up the same charge, the same combination on a clean target, see what that pattern looks like. We're getting a denser shot pattern out of this, but really still not what I'm aiming for. Um, we've got a pretty large hole over there on the upper right hand side. And um, I mean, a good density really of the shot. It's not totally scattered, but we've still just got a big hole there where we would like to be shooting and, and taking down a nice gobbler. You could probably make the argument that we have a double barrel so we can pop off two shots pretty quickly. Um, what I'm gonna try next though is half of that cushion wad with that lubrication. I'm, I don't totally understand the physics of this, but I'm really interested in how we're gonna have pretty good density, I think, um, initially with the dry uh, cushion wad. But then once we add the lubricated uh, cushion wad, we have a big change. And I think that's just a great example of, of how things can change with your muzzle loading components and, and how much something seemingly so little can actually affect things quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna take one of our lubricated cushion wads here bust it in half like that, drop it down the bore, and then we'll measure out still our uh, shot and a half or, or measurement and a half of shot. So right off the bat, we have 29 shots into the bird target here. Back at the bench here, we had 29 shots in the bird, 16 in the bowl and 24 on paper for this shot. Uh, this is the best that we've had and cutting that wad in half has really helped a ton. So I was talking to my buddy Aaron, who's a shotgun, muzzle-loading shotgun aficionado here. Uh, he recommended it and verified what I was thinking that our shotgun wad and the donut effect that we we're having were uh, in conjunction. Those were part of the same deal. He recommended that we cut the wad in half, which we verified has worked. But the next thing he said and he recommended was to try to go up to an ounce and an eighth square load of powder and shot. And that measures out to 82 grains by volume for black powder. And while our initial test showed that that was a little too much oomph, we had a little too much spread, I think that with the lubed cushion wad and the half cushion wad, uh, we could get some more interesting uh, variables happening in here. Even though we went up almost 20 entire grains of our shot and our powder here, we have a similar spread. We have a nice condensed pattern, at least to a certain degree here in our bowl where we have a lot of shots in here. Not a whole lot, again, in the bird itself, at least as far as the target goes, but we do have a nice continuance of shot here, especially in kind of this line cutting horizontal here. 
The pattern itself onto the newsprint, I'll step back here so you can see it a little bit, is a bit wider than the 65 grain test that we've been doing, but we do have more shot coming down range. So let's look at these kind of side by side. You'll have to forgive the arrangement here. <laughs> the wind is becoming a little difficult to manage these massive sheets of paper. So to recap here, our 65 grain, one and a half measures of shot with the half lubed cushion wad gave us 29 shots in the bird, 16 in the bull, and 24 total on the eight and a half by 11. The 82 grains, which is an ounce in an eighth square load of powder to shot, gave us 20 in the bird, 32 in the bowl, and 37 on the paper. And you can see a little bit uh, here, the pattern spreads. Really the spread of the overall shots on the large sheets of paper here are very similar. Uh, I think if we had a computer graph to measure all this stuff over, I don't think there's a whole lot of variation. And even looking at it here, the 82, looks a little bit tighter. Well, we have a similar collection of the powder there in the bowl um, and around the turkey. I think both of these would be a dead bird, especially here on the 65 grain. We have several in that brain there. That would take the bird out and we'd have an opportunity then with our follow-up shot if we needed to. The same really goes for this 82, which I'm surprised about because our dry full cushion wad gave us such an ugly spread, um, but cutting that and going that cushion wad into half and going with the lubed option really brought in the large powder charge into where we need to go here. We have two of these target sets left. I think the only thing for us to do now is load up both barrels with each of these charges and these loads shoot both barrels into a target on their own and compare those. And then we can kind of get a really comprehensive look, I think, of what this original 14 gauge is gonna do for us this year when it comes to turkey hunting. Here's a look at both double barrel shot patterns. On the top, we have our 65 grains, one and a half loads of shot. On the bottom, we have our 82 grain or ounce and an eighth square load here. The patterns are very similar, just like we saw on the single barrel tests. I think I pulled a little bit on the second shot of our 65 grain test there. You can see a little bit more of the pattern over here to the right. We have a nice cluster of shot really from both barrel patterns there just to the right of our turkey target head. At the bottom here on our 82 grain, we have more of the pattern towards the bottom here. Again, I'm, I'm anticipating that as being user error, but we do have some nice shot patterns into that turkey target. I mean, we have a nice cluster of shot in here towards the head and then another shot clustered down here at the base of the spine. Um, and, and again, similar patterns there on our 65 grain shot. We have a really nice cluster in the center of the head mass there, as well as down at the base of the spinal cord. Getting down to just numbers here, our 65 grain charge had 22 shots in the bird, 33 in the bull, and 40 on the paper. Our 82 grain square load had 18 in the bird, 25 in the bull, and 39 in the paper. As always, I love to hear your feedback on these videos. Like I said, this is kind of a, a newer venture to me. I don't have as much experience with muzzle-loading shotguns, but I'd love to hear what you think. Are these targets and loads good enough for you, for you to take this muzzleloader hunting? Or would you like a better target before you went out into the woods? And if you would like a better target, please give me some suggestions on what you would do differently compared to what we've done in the video. We've kind of run a gambit here this morning when it comes to the variables of a muzzleloading shotgun like this one, but I'd love to hear, uh, especially from the folks out there who are more experienced and have shot a lot of shotgun over the years. I'll have close-up photos of the muzzleloader as well as the targets that we shot at ilovemuzzleloading.com. It'll be the first link in the video description. As always, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.